Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the AM show hosted live on Alphaman. It is a uh, crisp Monday morning here, November uh, 29th, and uh, I am I'm R2 Dgen, and I am brought to, or, uh, <laughs> I'm live with uh, with the man, the myth, uh, the legend, free market capitalist. Are you drunk this morning? Uh, a little bit. No, as I said, my my dog is like I'm all kidding. up in my shit right now. And good morning, uh, everybody. It's like one of those um, those drills that you do and like when you're playing sports where like you have a lot of distraction and you got to kind of try and focus on what you're doing. I'm not very good at it as it turns out. <laughs> so I think you'll be fine. But here we are. Um, yeah. How was your how was your weekend? Thanksgiving weekend. We still went live Thursday and Friday, but uh, Saturday and Sunday seemed pretty, uh, you know, still pretty surprisingly active in NFTs. But what, what was going on with you? Well, if you expected the holidays to slow down the NFT market, you were wrong. Uh, I did. I did. I think I think Thanksgiving Day was a little quiet, but then it picked up steam again. I mean, this market is chugging. Most high profile mints are trading well above mint price. Um, quite a few interesting, successful stories, maybe a couple tragedies. But man, the weekend was busy. Yeah, there was a lot going on. So on that note, we will just uh, jump right into it. A brief overview of the cryptocurrency markets. We see Bitcoin and Ethereum, along with a lot of the other coins, up about 5-6% in the last 24 hours. Uh, Ethereum is holding steady at about uh, 4,300, bouncing around between 4,300-4,400, and no loss on the week. Bitcoin still down about 3.5% for a week, but uh, yeah, re recovering nicely and starting to head back towards that uh, 60,000 mark. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it saved a lot of people. Um, from awkward discussions with their families as they were, uh, you know, probably shilling the uh, the bitcoins and the cryptos, and uh, you know, your uh, your aunt and uncle, maybe if they got into it, saw a little bit of their uh, their money come back into their account. So let's be frank. The only reason it, uh, Ethereum rallied from thirty three hundred to forty nine hundred was because people needed Ethereum to buy NFTs. Uh, once they bought enough Ethereum, they started buying NFTs again, and the spot price began to fall. Very simple story. Uh, you are in the place to be. That is the NFT market. Also, not the worst place to be is the uh, the Metaverse and Sandbox specifically. They are within striking distance of overtaking Decentraland. Um, just a mere $50 million of market cap out from switching spots as they... Uh, are both sitting in the top 40 of cryptocurrencies on some pretty pretty crazy runs over the last month. Yeah, there was a bit of a pullback in the metaverse plays, but man, they still look really strong. I'll tell you, I've seen traditional stock people on Twitter start talking about mana and sand. So, I mean, that's pretty interesting to me because these are guys who don't these are guys who don't even talk about Ethereum and Bitcoin. So, it's uh, it's definitely yeah making waves out there for sure yeah for sure uh, catching the right people's interest um, headed more into the uh, the NFT world but um, you know some some traditional market crossover we see Adidas uh, announced a or teased a partnership with Board Ape Yacht Club and Punks Comics. Um, they have some some 3D avatars of punks posted with uh, rocking the uh, Adidas zip ups. Uh, same thing for the punks rocking an Adidas T-shirt there. Um, so uh, Adidas is making some some pretty big plays for for metaverse as well. Uh, also buying a pretty large chunk of land in Sandbox too. So uh, Adidas is is jumping in, and we saw Nike do the same thing last week. Uh, what do you what do you think about that? No official partnerships have been announced, but uh, these three entities made the exact same tweet with four backslashes and uh, the eyes looking at uh, these Adidas clothes. I thought it was pretty interesting because one of our, I'm going to guess, younger Alphamit members said, oh, total boomer move. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> which was funny to me because I was like, ooh, Adidas, that's interesting. And I guess that makes me a boomer. But I do, as we say almost every week now, when a new one of these stories pops up that this is just great for 
uh, NFTs and crypto in general as we see at least the forward thinking corporations like the NBA and Adidas and Nike uh, start to get into the fray here. Yeah, and this is going to be important in uh, cultural acceptance. There's going to be, you know, for for somebody under the age of 25 where this stuff just really kind of makes sense and resonates with them, it's not – this isn't maybe moving the needle because you're just seeing, like they said, these old boomer companies move into the space. But uh, there are actually a lot of people alive that are over the age of 25. And uh, <laughs> these companies actually just lend legitimacy to um, to crypto, NFTs, metaverse. And, uh, you know, the fact that these multi-billion dollar companies are willing to partake in these industries is is going to be almost like a seal of approval for you know, some 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 older people to to feel good about what's going on. So uh, I see this and I feel very bullish about it. If that makes me a boomer, then so be it. But uh, I'll, I'll wear that badge with pride, I guess, at some point. <laughs> I thought I thought the Adidas uh, gear looked pretty good, too. Yeah, yeah, that does. It is a it is a classic brand. Um, them and Nike have always uh, been at the forefront of cultural relevancy in the last uh, 30, 40 years. Um, finally, just wrapping up the Adidas uh, talk is uh, they they sent out a tweet uh, earlier this week that actually I didn't even notice, but they just said we've partnered with Coinbase, probably nothing. So I mean they're they're oh. going full steam ahead. <laughs> I, I just would love to see the ad exact. Like, what do you mean, probably nothing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're not right. They're not quite ready to be saying PN or GM. <laughs> But, uh, you know, they're they're using the full words there, which is a step in the right direction. But, uh, yeah. Young interns like, no, trust me, it works. Put it at the end. Yeah. <laughs> They'll get it. Believe me. They'll get it. Yeah. Uh, OK, enough about it, Adidas. Let's uh, let's quickly just wrap up with uh, WGMI looking at the seven day change. Punk's comics. Uh, I don't think anything to do with yesterday's announcement, but uh is, is on a huge run. It's gone from about a point two floor up to about point or uh, a two floor up to four ETH floor now up almost 100 percent on the week. This uh, is related to uh, Meta Heroes, the planets. And yes, Staten, exactly. Which is coming up and maybe Scott will come on during the AMA and give us a little uh, little background on that because he's deep in that world. Yeah, Scott is definitely the person to reach out to. Uh, sorry for volunteering you, but um, if if you're ever thinking about getting in the meta, um, the meta hero, and the punks comics, these uh, he's a wealth of knowledge in that, and I've slowly been trying to wrap my head around it, but I don't partake in that ecosystem, so it's um, you know it doesn't doesn't quite fully make sense to me. But it's a it's a huge entity in NFTs. Um, Etherorks, a, a lot of people in Alpha Mint, uh, a part of Etherorks, and that's sitting at about a 1.5 floor, and that has just been on a tear over the last week, or even just the last month. I think it was down to 0.4 at some point, and it has just gone right up to one and a half ETH, and so is no sign of slowing down. Uh, yeah, and this floor does not tell the accumulation story under the surface because the amount of unique owners just keeps going up every day. Uh, the price of Zug has been sitting between one fifty and two dollars, and I mean these really seem poised uh, poised to make a very big move in ETH terms uh, once that extra supply from Wales is sopped up. But yeah, Ether Orcs looks super strong. Yeah, not to incite any FOMO in an, in anybody, but uh, there are only eighty six on the market, and uh, only le- uh, only twenty nine until we hit a two ETH floor on Ether Orcs. So, and to be fair, every time we move up a level, like from one to two or two to three, blah blah blah, these whales who own dozens are gonna dump on the floor again. I mean, we do have to work through supply from the original game because people who stacked early and minted a ton of orcs are banking right now and they're getting rid of their extra inventory which is just an opportunity for people who believe in this p2e paradigm we're entering as orcs are the original the best and uh, will attain blue chip status because of it the ogs of the uh the nft gaming space and uh i think we almost went as far as calling them the uh crypto punks of the gaming world i truly believe that Yeah, no, I mean, they're just they're hitting all the notes. The team is awesome. Um, You know, shameless self-promotion for for Alpha Mint, you and I and Maz. But we did the interview 
uh, with the team on Twitter spaces last week. That is up on our YouTube page if you want to go check it out. But I mean, they're just awesome to be around. And if your thesis is betting on people, I can't think of uh, anyone better. Yeah, no question. So very exciting. And we'll definitely watch um, watch Ether Orcs as, as we always do. Um, a pretty successful mint that we kind of left off with last week. The uh, presale had already gone off without a hitch, but the Littles... Um, was an interesting project that we were talking about. I know a lot of people partook in the um, public mint on Friday evening. Uh, and nice to see some news about a project that uh, actually launched without a bunch of drama or chaos, despite, you know, some some mixed feelings about the price point, which was 0.125 per mint. Uh, but yeah, Will Will X Lee on Twitter was somebody that made a how to how to drop a successful NFT project thread um over a month ago and he he put his money where his mouth is and, and pulled it off so yeah i i think this was the launch was uh not completely smooth but i think it went very well it's a dope project i think the littles look pretty great in people's pfps which is a big thing for cobain and i um the floor is at 0.3 right now. I think it got up to 0.7. I forget if that was either pre-reveal or right after the reveal. Um, they haven't, and correct me if I'm wrong, somebody out there, but they haven't announced their road, their finite roadmap yet for exactly what comes next. But they're holding that floor above mint. Uh, they look great. And uh, that seems to be a pretty successful launch for the Littles. Yeah, I, I think that they have a very clean art style. They're they're they fit the cute kind of niche. Uh, they have some varying traits. Um, I mean, some of the very basic floors end up looking a little a uh, little redundant, but you get that in any project. But yeah, yeah. it's hard to avoid that. You know, judge it by the the rares and the grails, which look amazing. So. Yeah, pretty cool. And, uh, um, you know, you mentioned the, the roadmap isn't fully fleshed out, but that's also uh, something w that we don't hate either, right? Like, it's it's one of those things. Get the community going. Get your drop to be successful. Have the ball rolling on that. And then start to slowly release roadmap. Exactly. I, I, I don't fucking care if you have, um, uh, you know, a AAA movie title plan for q3 of 2025 like i just i don't like i i have zero conviction in the fact that that will happen um until you actually land that deal so just build your community build your uh your your contracts your dev your team and uh and go from there but they've given us enough hints that we're very interested to hear what happens next so you know he's playing um he's playing the atmosphere correctly and that is uh that's very heartening. I think if you own the Littles, uh, that may be a good hold. That's that's a very cool project. Speaking of uh, a project that did drop on the weekend that we were all looking forward to, but might not have been as smooth as the Littles was Swampverse. Uh, that has dropped. It has... Um, it is completely sold out now. They are still in the pre-reveal stage. I'm just going to pull it up on OpenSea really quickly. Um, but also holding a floor of 0.3, which might actually be pretty impressive for them at this point. Uh, what's your take? What are, you, what are you thinking right now for Swamp First? I know you minted them. You were on the white list, if I believe. Yeah, point three is pretty impressive right now. I think um, Littles got up to 0.7 and have now crashed back to 0.3 post-reveal. Uh, the swamp verse got up to 0.4 at one point. So I could see it pulling back to 0.15 or 0.2 after reveal here. I believe the reveal is at noon Eastern. I know it's today. Um, the launch was a bit of a disaster. The whitelist was very smooth. Um, it was 24 hours. It started slowly and then filled up pretty quick. I think once people saw it was like literal free money, the contract was so well written. I was able to mint three for 0.21, and they were 0.06 each. So I only paid uh, 0.03 in gas for three, which is pretty great. And uh, they were instantly sitting at a 0.3, 0.4 floor. So you could have just taken your free ETH and, and walked away. Um, they're doing some interesting 
And I'm not going to say interesting like original, but certainly they're doing the model that appeals to a lot of us right now. I'm pretty addicted to staking and earning these tokens. I mean, orcs really got me into I guess see my cats originally got me into it but you know being earning zug every day and selling it on sushi swap i mean that is a hell of a feeling uh and that's what kind of appeals to me in any of these projects that have the the tokenomics model built in Swampverse has some influencers on on board as well with phase banks and gary v both talking about it over the weekend you'll probably get that post reveal dump but I think the the problem was that they sold 7,500 during the whitelist. So there were 2,500 left for the public. We knew this would be a gas war and we knew it would be hard to get, but we thought the team was at least semi-competent in understanding how the launch dynamics would work because their plan was they would stealth launch the public contract and then alert only certain members in the discord with a tag the honorary swampers who were a technical waitlist versus the whitelist people the whitelisters as well if they wanted to buy their extra seven so everyone was sitting around waiting for this stealth drop and it happened and instantly within i guess three blocks it was sold out it was botted to hell i think one person got 460 of them so that oh, floor wow. could probably I didn't even hear be, that. Yeah, that floor could be a lot higher right now if this person with 460 didn't have to unload inventory. And boy, was there a uh, mutiny in the Discord. I mean, no one was able to get in the public sale. Uh, people were pretty pissed. They fought it's back with some pretty interesting statements too about like I don't I don't understand what you're all so upset about and <laughs> But here's the here's the thing, right? You have to change your contract if you're going to do a stealth drop. The problem was they used the exact same contract as the whitelist, which means that bots had already flagged it so that when it went live again, they could instantly bot it. They didn't even think, oh, well, maybe I should change the contract. Now, I'm sure it still would have gotten a little botted, but at least some people who got the, the notification right away probably would have had a chance at some. The way they did it, it was sloppy, and that caused nobody to get any. So it was unfortunate in, in how that worked. Yeah, I can't believe that somebody that uh, minted 460 of these are going to be sitting on them long term. This is uh, a get your ETH and get out kind of play for them. Um, I I didn't actually manage to, to mint any of these. I was out while it happened, and it sounded like unless you were on the whitelist, you probably didn't have much of a chance either. Um, but, uh, I do actually really like the, uh, the pixel art on them. I think they're, they're pretty cool. And, uh, the colors are nice, nice and vibrant. And, uh, you know, I think that this could be a project that has some legs. Uh, I, I don't think I'd be buying them pre reveal at 0.3 right now. Um, uh, typically, you know, as the uh, you know the the floor starts to to find itself and people start to peel off their rares, you're definitely paying a premium for a shot at a rare uh, or a right. one of one. But um, you know, I, I would probably watch these, and you know, if I'm feeling pretty liquid and they're they're sitting maybe around point one floor, if that's what it comes to, I might pick up one or two. So here's how you have to look at it, right? If you think in any way this is a long term play then you have to wonder, look, everything pulls back after reveal. 100% of projects pull back after reveal. The question is how deep and for how long? Because if your plan is, well, I'm going to sell it pre-reveal because it's inflated and then buy it back, that's not easy. I mean, selling is easy. Buying back is really, really hard. So if you have any long-term conviction, you probably just have to hold through whatever happens post reveal to cobain's point if you're if you don't have any and you're looking to shop buying pre-reveal right now is is not is not positive ev even if it works out you know this time or once in a while that one you know rallies after reveal uh it's just not positive ev over time yeah no you gotta you gotta remember that there is uh a a premium being paid for a shot at those rares. Um, yep. The the odd time, we you know shouldn't say that every time a reveal drops. Um, 
or uh, every time the reveal comes out that the uh, the price drops, there are the odd ones where maybe um, the expectation of the art actually exceeds the the teasers and stuff that they've dropped. Um, you know, that if they really nail the rarities, there's lots of like Cryptoon Goons was one that actually it did drop a little bit after the reveal, but uh, that one I think everybody saw it and went, Oh, damn, these are actually pretty good. All uh, the projects that drop have one thing in common traditional mint. All the projects that rally after reveal have one thing in common Dutch auction. So maybe watch the ones that are on a Dutch auction because those are the ones that rally after reveal. Just look at Mutant Apes. Oh yeah, mutant apes went crazy after after Didn't the. Did they get to a twenty there. floor at one point? No, I don't think it was that high, but I think it was more like eight or nine. Like it was a good, it was a good. Yeah, and run. you paid two point six plus a little gas. So yeah, companies that do Dutch auctions know they have the demand. I guarantee you, if any company is worth their salt and doing a Dutch auction, wherever they start that Dutch auction at. They expect the price to go well above that afterwards. They're not stupid. Now, I know quite a few small shit projects did Dutch auctions late in the last cycle, but that's not who I'm talking about. So, yeah, a great segue regarding Dutch auctions, my friend, because uh, we are going to move into the Clonex drop coming up. Uh, you are on the presale. You minted yours. It was 0 0.05, which is already a gigantic win uh, with the pre-reveal. But the Dutch auction is starting today. What time is that at? The Dutch auction, I believe, is 2 p.m. Eastern today. That's uh, that's going to be an all hands on deck, and we're gonna we're gonna watch that and see see what goes down with the Clonex drop. But uh, is it confirmed? It's starting at three ETH. That will start at three ETH and lower by point one every 30 minutes oh that's actually quite a slow drop actually <laughs> yeah i expect it to sell out around 2.8 or 2.7 plus gas right because the floor right now on these uh mint files is sitting at 3.75 uh yeah, i gotta go to six or seven after reveal pre uh so pre-sale started when on friday it started, yeah, it's, uh, was it Friday or Saturday? It started on the 27th, whatever day that was. Yeah, so Saturday, um, okay. Yep, and uh, it's 48 hours for people to claim. If you owned one of the pre-sale NFTs, you're actually down a little bit right now. The pre-sale NFTs were pricing in a 4.2 floor for each Clonex, and they're sitting at 3.75 last time I checked. So... I think they got as low as 3.2, and they got as high as 4. A few of them sold for 4. Now, there were some weird outliers that I just assume were either amateurs or idiots trying to pump the market. Like, I saw one sell for 9. I saw a few sell for just weird prices that were above the floor for no reason. There is no metadata to steal right now. Clonex is doing this in a very clever way. Um, but there, it's... It's one of those things where they think they have the demand. It will be seen as to whether it's actually there. I think they understand it's coming from outside the traditional NFT market if it is there. And I haven't sold any of mine yet. Uh, I do believe they're going to rise post-reveal, which bucks the trend. But it is a Dutch auction. I think it's going to be a very similar route to mutants. I think they will pump really hard after the Ducks auction, maybe for 12 hours, 24 hours, 36 hours, and then they'll crash to two. And people will forget about them for a month. And then eventually there'll be a long-term play. Well, or I know I'm wrong. And and they'll crash to two right after the Dutch auction, and, and I'll be an idiot. But I'm I mean, going it, for that. It'll be interesting to draw some parallels. I know Mechaverse wasn't a Dutch auction, um, but uh, you know they kind of held on pre-reveal for the better part of a week around an 8 ETH floor, uh, the, the hype around Clonex is, I, I believe, to be a lot higher than that. Um, and do you know when the reveal schedule is? Instant. Like instant? After the Dutch auction. They, oh, okay. they have right. some special tech that will make it instant. There will be no pre-reveal. So I'm really, uh, really taking a gamble here. So that's interesting because um, I guess that would mean that they have all of these pre-rendered. Like they've already run the rarities because I, it's got to take some time quote, to generate these. Yeah. I don't want to quote what the technical aspects are. As far as I could tell right now, 
one vial is not linked to one Clonex. They're going to do that somehow instantly after the reveal. So right now, no Clonex vial equals a Clonex rare. I believe that rarity will be decided once the Dutch auction closes and you get assigned a random Clonex. Okay, interesting. That's what I think. But they, again, I don't. If they have talked about the exact specifics of the tech, I haven't heard it. So maybe Dylan, who knows more, can tell us in the chat later today uh, if he's online. Yeah. Well, if you're around uh, at about two two o'clock for the the drop, we should all jump into the voice channel and kind of just watch it go down. It, you know, if if your theory holds true, it shouldn't be a very long call, and the the mints should start rolling right away. I gotta believe with the floor sitting at about point three uh, three point seven right now that uh, people are gonna start picking away at it at three ETH, and then you know if a little bit of traction gets going on that people will start to fomo and uh right. and just and you know see it mint out so the uh the pre-reveal floor on the pre-sales are um a pretty pretty good indicator of what's going to go down I'll tell you what's strange and I have no explanation for this right now there's supposed to be 10,000 in the pre-sale and it's showing 2,200 items right now um I have no idea why that is, but I promise you there's nobody out there not minting their 0.05 to get a free 3 ETH. So I'm not sure what's going on. Again, all their tech is weird. Okay, there was a few controversies over the weekend where if you own certain artifact items, you couldn't use them as the pre-sale ticket. They had to send you a special mint disc, okay? And that mint disc, was then what you used to verify so that you could uh, mint your vials. I have no clue what's going on behind the scenes. I'm really not sweating it too much, uh, but you know, we'll see. I mean, if this all collapses in my face spectacularly, I think that'll at least have entertainment value even if I lose my ETH value, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I know that this has been something you've been talking about a lot um, in the last, I guess month basically just about how how much of your liquidity is locked up in the fuo drips and the and this clonex uh right clonex drop but um yeah i'm gonna be interested to see what you end up doing too i know you've kind of had some varying takes on what you think is the right play obviously that's a, a hard decision to make and you kind of got to watch what's going down in real time but i'm just uh, hoping i don't pull three floors <laughs> I mean, it would be nice if I could pull at least a semi-rare so that uh, it doesn't matter either way. But trying to go for those Takashi drips. I don't know if the... So if you don't know, Takashi Murakami collaborated on the rarest traits for Clonex. Um, but I don't know. There's like 50, apparently, that are the rarest quote-unquote DNA. So I'm not sure if they'll all be Takashi drip, but... Hoping to pull a rare and make it all worth it. So actually, this is a this is a good opportunity to have a little gentleman's bet going on with this uh, with this drop too. So do you want to do you want to set an over underline on what the biggest purchase is? Let's say by uh, midnight Eastern time today. Uh, on I the think, secondary market, obviously. I think one will sell if it is instant reveal. And we and there and you know we could see them and we know what the rares are or whatever. I do think one will sell for 125 ETH. You, okay, wow. Um, I can't remember what we set this line for at Mecca, and I do believe that you like informally got you in, informally won. There was some kind of weird stipulation there, but um, the rares eh? were not. Yeah, the rares were not Insta revealed in Mecca. Right. So like you Oh yeah, got... it was a promise of a one of one and there were some <laughs> offers on it or something. Right. Right. Yeah, it was a little weird. Uh <laughs> the whole thing. A weird, weird drop for a weird project. So Yeah, very very exciting. So 125 um I Okay, so assuming the 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 real veal happens today, um I am going to pick the under on that. Um and so if I win, you're giving me one of your clone X. And uh, if I lose, um, we'll, we'll shake hands on it. Yeah, sounds good to me. <laughs> That's a, that sounds very fair. Yeah, totally fair. Fair trade. Um, okay, so let's let's move on to the other kind of meta that's going on in the NFT world right now. And that is the uh, the gaming um, uh, 
you know, <laughs> the gaming so projects do, that are just, going let on. Me put the, let me pause this. For oh, a sure, sure, sure. I'm yeah. going to do something entertaining for the show because even though I just said I think it's going to fall to 2E, uh, Shubs wants to make a bet that Clone X is under 3 ETH in a week. So, seven days from November 29th, 9 38 a.m., I will take that bet for one Alpha Pass, which is currently valued at 0.1. So are you you're saying that it will be over or under three ETH in a week? It will be over three ETH in a week. Oh, the floor? Okay. Yep. Interesting. One alpha pass. One alpha Bet pass taken. is on the line. Okay. The we'll we'll talk next Monday. D Gen NFT traders, also D Gen gamblers. Boom. Um, let's uh let's go. Um, okay, are we good to close off Clonex or any final thoughts on that? Close it off. It's dead to me. It's dead to you? <laughs> uh, somebody in the background is telling me that that's not the case. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, we, we were talking games. Wolf Game, obviously, talk of the town over the last week. Uh, a bunch of derivatives have dropped. Fox Game, Bear Game, Kong Game has been a shit show. Whales Game dropped yesterday. Uh, where are you at on that? Uh, well, these are interesting. These are all the derivatives we had been talking about were planned based on the Wolf game. We were chatting in the pre-show about the rumors that basically these are all copy-paste of the same contract. And with Wolf game going through so many growing pains uh, mid-phase one, we're wondering if these other games will experience the same things, if it's the same code. I'm not involved in any of them. I was only whitelisted for Kong game, which was supposed to debut yesterday. But get this. They were going to load 64 by 64 images, 64 pixels by 64 pixels. That's what the Kongs were. They went to go load the contract onto the main net, and they saw it was going to cost them 30 ETH. So putting that much data on chain is pricey. I guess these guys did not anticipate that. They were looking to spend more like 8 ETH. So they're going to be spending these next few days reducing the images to 32 by 32 so they could afford to put that thing on chain. Uh, that was the only game that I was whitelisted for. You bought Whale Games, so maybe you could tell us about that. Yeah, just going back to that, um, putting data on chain and uploading images and whatnot. It is incredibly expensive. I saw an infographic sometime last week, uh, and it's somewhere in the ballpark of $400 million per gigabyte to upload um, actual data and images and whatnot onto um, the Ethereum blockchain. So space is definitely a at a premium cost there. Uh, so no surprise to hear that they went to upload that and were taken aback by the price. Um, but uh, yeah, I, in, in terms of Kong game, it's uh, I think a huge misstep for them simply because it might just be too little too late um, as some of these games kind of gain traction and, and crash back into the uh, the ether, so to speak. But uh, yes, I did. I did mint a uh, whale game yesterday. They did something kind of weird, too. They had 8,000 um, pre-sale slots that people were whitelisted for and 2,000 um, public sale drops. Now, they launched the public sale and the pre-sale at the exact same time when uh, some people got the impression that the uh, public sale was going to be after the eight hours of, of the whitelist. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was interesting. Uh, yeah, you know what? And uh, I apologize for, for not calling that out. I didn't realize that there was some confusion. I actually just thought that it was, um, it was obvious that uh, in their in – their, um, their tweet and whatnot that they you were going to have access to the public sale as well. I mean, they just designated eight thousand slots to the uh, the whitelisters and two thousand to the public sale. And I actually thought it was a good way of doing it, just because um, with the passive generation, once you mint them, it does start right away. And these games do have a uh, tendency to favor people that were um, first movers in it. And so you know, eight hours of uh, whitelisters being able to have access to these followed by the public sale would would put anybody on the whitelist at a major advantage. And I think that that would actually probably end up hurting the project because um, anybody that was late to the party might feel a little put out by it. So it was um, it was it was definitely an interesting drop. Uh, it's had its ups and downs. There was a slight discord hack that they got under control. Um, 
pretty quickly and it created a little bit of FUD. I've seen the floor on the whales go from like one ETH down to 0.4 to 0.6. Uh, the fishermen are sitting right around one, uh, 0.1 ETH right now, but I've seen them go up to almost 0.2 sporadically. And the volume stayed pretty good on that. It does drop off quite a bit when gas starts to get high, but uh, but yeah, the whole, the whole thing has been... Um, it's been pretty fun. It's been fun to actually just partake in something and see how it goes. I, I'm at a pretty low risk standpoint right now in regards to the game. So yeah, the fishermen generate krill, which is the token. Um, I'm going to try and pull up the main game page here while I'm talking about it. Um, but yeah, they, they fishermen gain krill. Whales get 20% of the krill. So each fisherman generates two, uh, 10,000 krill a day. So having a whale will... Um, you know, earn you your stake of the 20% that they pull in there. Uh, as I said, you don't actually have to stake your fishermen or your whales, which we kind of have um, differing opinions on. When I first saw this project and saw that that was the case, I was actually pretty bearish on it. Uh, I actually am of the standpoint that, you know, staking is is um, part of the importance of it. It does kind of build some price into the floor that you actually have to stake and unstake these it does constrict supply a lot so that you don't get the best of both worlds while you're um, while you're gaining the tokens plus able to sell whenever you want. But I do actually just wonder if maybe this ends up being a little bit favorable as as people with less liquidity um, get tired of paying gas on every single transaction they do. Right. Um, I, I've had a couple of staking projects and, you know, I've learned to to get over it, but um, they're staked right now, and the cost to unstake it would be far more than it would to, like actually recoup the cost of selling it. And uh, like they're just staking indefinitely. If the project ever goes on a pump, I might pull them out and sell them. But uh, but yeah, th there is that pressure, and I'm wondering if maybe this is something that's uh, resonating with people as a, a good alternative. Yeah, I think i love these games so i think that we're just unfortunately going to go through a period of cheap derivatives based on the one that was really popular but i don't think interest in these games are going to wane it's just about picking the right one and that's why the hive mind of alpha mint is so valuable um i was just told in the alpha mint show chat that there is a possibility uh that they will be oh was that deleted <laughs> Someone put uh, a notice there. Let's see. We are currently targeting November 29th, 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern launch time. Uh, the whitelist mint will be for eight hours. That's from Kong Game. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe I will partake in one of these games. I do think they're fun. And uh, if you can afford the gas, uh, it's worth a shot. Yeah. Um, so how do you feel about the fact that something like whale game you don't have to stake in we had this discussion kind of in the pre-show yeah, no, but no, no, no. i i i dislike that i think that it makes sense that you stake something you earn yield um without staking you're you're taking away a huge incentive for people not to sell and it seems obvious but you know, there's a few projects that don't that I love, like Kongs and Kaiju. It's passive yield. You don't have to stake to earn your yield. But I do believe there are exceptions to the norm. And if I was advising Kaiju, I, I would advise staking at this point. Right. Yeah. I, I, I tend to agree with that sentiment, too. I'm just uh, I'm watching this one pretty closely, obviously, because I've partaken in it. Um, I actually threw a little bit in the liquidity pool too. I've never done that before. And that's been kind of interesting. So just for like some, some context, I threw it in early. Um, I threw in about 500 krill at the time. It cost me 0 0.05 ETH was the uh, kind of the equivalency. So that's kind of dropped off, um, a little bit. So I'm, I'm taking, I think I'm taking a little bit of a L on that, but it has generated like 2,700 krill for me in that time. So, um, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around whether the tokenomics of that are, are working out favorably or not. But uh, yeah, it's been interesting. The one other interesting thing that uh, Whale Game did that differs from Wolf Game is that when you're minting using the Krill token, um, it's just every 10th token is a whale. So you actually know when these whales are going to be minted. So I, I, I have seen people kind of watch the mint counter to see how many they are and they will um, force a, a bigger purchase through to make sure that they grab a whale. 
And now, now thinking about that, I don't know that the parity on the the krill token has actually reflected that. And so I'm wondering if there's an opportunity to buy enough krill token to guarantee that you mint maybe eight, uh, and you time it out so that you you're you're sure to get that uh, that whale and then sell it for about 0.4 ETH. Now that I'm talking through this, I'm not even sure if that's like a, a was a good move by them or not. But it was a kind of a way of them removing the randomness from. Uh, that makes zero sense to me. You need the, yeah. A, you need the randomness. Otherwise, bots are going to instantly uh, cheat. Like, what, what is this ridiculous? Well, I, now I'm trying to think. Like, there's got to be some game theory in this. So, like, you could buy or accumulate enough krill to guarantee yourself a whale. Um, like, just say you had enough to mint ten. Um, you could just mint ten and grab yourself a whale and nine fishermen. Um, it, it does, it, it was a hedge against the fact that, you know, people seem to always find an exploit in the contract, to to be able to, to unfairly play the game as we saw with Wolf game. And, uh, I think there was another one that was doing that too. I think it was maybe bear game, but, um, yeah, I, I'm wondering if this is going to maybe create some unintended game theory, um, ideas too. Yeah, certainly possible, but sometimes the biggest mistakes end up. Yeah, yeah, no, but like even just in gaming and like competitive gaming or something like sometimes the um, the most un- un- unintended things end up making the most uh, compelling game mechanics. I don't know if that's the case here, but uh, but yeah, chocolate chip cookies were an accident. <laughs> <laughs> cookies, so. Boom, right. and now they're a staple. Whale game to the moon confirmed. Thank you, free market. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so what else do we got? I think we touched on most of the topics we were uh, we had outlined. Um, Digi Dragon. Oh, right. Yes. No, we have was not. Was a pretty high profile drop that Cobain and I were in love with this art. I think we had looked at the three large dragon projects dropping, and you you know universally decided this was the best art, the best possible profile picture um of the three they seem to have all the hype in the world at least in their own discord i think for future reference that'll be a good indicator is that do they have any buzz off of discord because we know how easy it is to stack a discord nowadays so maybe that was a potential red flag we should have seen from the beginning but the launch was not smooth uh Uh, to say the least yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to say the least, the launch was botched, and I forget the exact dynamics behind it. I remember the opening line was like 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.7, because this is a, a low supply, if I'm not mistaken, right? A 1,000 Genesis Dragons? Um, uh, I believe it's 1,500 Genesis Dragons. 1,500. Yeah. Yeah, so this was a very low supply. It seemed to open at a high line and then just continued to get smacked Um eventually got down to i think 0.1 or 0.15 and then the discord not just the discord i think the website got hacked Mm, if i'm not mistaken it it was first everyone thought a rug was occurring as the guy transferred all the eth he made in the project uh out of the wallet and then the floor price was dropping it looked like he got hacked and was maybe trying to protect his ETH, but it was just completely fumbled. Uh, the floor is decimated this morning, I think, still at 0.1 or 0.5, and that was not a good look. Uh, down to 0.085 right now um, for a yeah. low for a low cap Genesis project. Uh, not a great look, as you said. And um, looking at the art, not necessarily as impressed as the ones that they teased uh mm-hmm. like i still think that the the character char- character of it um looks good but like some of these backgrounds are like f- fucking messy they did like a glitch background did you see that it like no. it's like a take on a vegan but like it's giving my eyes um a, a hard time just trying to like process <laughs> what the fuck is going on with it uh but some some cool traits uh but yeah a botched launch and uh poor recovery 0.85 only 48 uh eth in volume traded as well so a shame to kind of see that project go that route i think it had a lot of potential um but you know did it really make its case for existing like this sounds simple right but <laughs> we all know 
there's kind of always going to be a current trend within the NFT market, and you and you have to fit into that trend somehow. Did they ever make any compelling cases to what they were beyond the art? Like, if you are just going to sell on the art at this point, you have better be a known artist or have something wildly original that catches people's eye. I don't see any project surviving on the art alone right now unless it is very very special which there are some projects coming up that are like that or it's a known artist i think we are really firmly entering the era of known artists rotating into nfts known corporations and entities and those are the ones that are really going to moon going forward yeah uh i i, I mean uh... If you are a part of Digi Dragons, like please don't take this as fud. I, I'm sure you all are feeling the pain of, uh, of of how poor the launch went and the unfortunate incidents that occurred in the meantime. Um, am I ready to like completely write this project off? No, they seem to have more to come. Uh, there's the other, the actual non Genesis drop um, coming up too. But uh, yeah, I mean we've seen worse projects um, go through worse. Uh, worst, <laughs> worst pre-sale and, and post-sale issues and, and come back strong. Um, starts with a B and ends with an Air X. But uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I was a shame. We were pretty bullish on this project. And uh, to see it go down like that is, um, you know, n- never want to see anyone go through that. No. So... All right. Um, yeah. On that note, uh, any any final words you want to lead off with before we invite some people up onto the stage and have a chat with them? Crypto Mori's are at a 0.7 floor this morning, an all time high. Uh, they were at 0.05 a couple weeks ago. This is my favorite profile picture project uh, of recent memory. It is a known artist. Uh, the vibes are a little weird in the Discord, but the family, that would be family, but fam Mori, uh, are very close knit. And there are some whales sweeping this floor. And I think these oh. are going to go to one to two E. Jesus. They, they have the look. Uh, 33 minutes ago, I'm just pulling this up on the screen a 40 ETH sale on a Crypto Mori. Ha! <laughs> Oh my God! Rest in peace, Scrappy Coco. I don't know I'm sorry, what. Sorry, sir. I don't know what this is. They're not rare traits. Um, no, there's something funny going on here. It was sold four hours ago for 0. 0.54, um, and then purchased for forty. So either <laughs> that's somebody just fucking around and buying it from themselves, uh, or about to pull off some elaborate tax harvesting scheme. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was strange. It caught my eye, but it's definitely not like one of the one of ones or anything like that. So not too sure what happened there. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't like an epic fat finger. Oh. That would be pretty painful. Um, yeah. One of our, one of our resident AM members had the number one rarity Mori that wasn't one of the one of ones. Very cool looking art. Uh, you should check them out. Yeah, I do like it. Sitting pretty comfortably at the point six floor, and uh, I'm I'm expecting almost maybe another uh, AM show, uh, AM pass um, wagered with uh, with shubs on this one too. <laughs> and just to be clear, that would be next Monday at nine thirty nine. They will be under three ETH. That doesn't mean if they quickly touch two point nine over the next week, I lose the bet. I just want to clarify that one week from now. Whatever the price is, that is what the the outcome of the bet is. I just can't wait for it to be like nine thirty two, and the floor is like point uh, two point <laughs> two point eight, and you're just liquidating everything to to buy sweep the floor, push it up over three, and then uh, claim your victory. But um, I've I've seen you do uh, more for less. <laughs> I don't well, Shubs <laughs> just said that he's going to buy a Clonex and list it under three. I want to see Shubang, who loves money, take an eight ETH ETH <laughs> and list it under three next Monday. I want to see him do that. I'm going to hey, be watching. Go. I'm going to be watching for it and just like snipe the shit out of that. Eight point two. Sorry, eight point two. 
We should probably also put a stipulation on there that it is not the listed floor price of uh, OpenSea, as sometimes they get stuck. But uh, what's yeah. the supply of mutants? Can I ask? Uh, Twenty thousand. Thank you. And what is the supply of Mebits? That I don't know. Yeah. All right. So good luck, guys. I'll see you next Monday. What is the supply of Mebits? Oh, twenty thousand. Oh, you're because you. I I get what you're doing here. Mm-hmm. They're all saying twenty thousand supply. You're dead. Okay. Sixteen <laughs> k minted. Uh, I'm not sure which one. Um, you know what? Uh, we're we're having enough conversation with the AM show 16, chat that sixteen thousand of, of twenty thousand mutants. Uh, oh, because there's still yeah. uh, there's still some there's still M M3s there, yeah. to be minted and stuff like that too. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, we're having a full conversation with the AM show chat, so why don't we just <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> we might we as well just let people put first, their hands up. The and, comments first, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me bits, uh, oh, three, three eighth floor that finally loaded. Thank you, Open C, for being slow as fuck. Uh, as always. it did get up to seven, if I'm not mistaken, after the uh, me bits, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before Bored Apes, there was a company called Artifact or Jesh. He goes, but that's Bored Ape, I'm like, all right. Uh, we will see if Artifact is uh, is a player as well. Yes, it'll be. Uh, I'm excited to see how that bet goes down for sure. Um, while we're just waiting for anybody to put their hand up and feel free to uh, to join us up on stage if you want to do that. Um, just a, a quick uh, alpha a state of the alpha mint thing. Um, uh, passes were like a little bit slower over the the weekend as people were kind of enjoying their Thanksgiving. But uh, just checking in right now, I think there's only 14 passes left on Wave Two, which is outstanding. Um, so looking forward to adding some more some more members in, or if you feel like loading up on some more passes, uh, we've definitely had a bunch of people doing that as well. So yeah, 14 passes left, and then um, we're probably gonna talk sometime soon about uh, Wave Three as that's inevitably approaching. Yes, sir. Holy I hands. Think, I missed it. Yeah, I was watching. I'm pretty sure the order of hands was Cass, Illidan, Josh, and Business, Fry Rice. Okay. Now, if I'm wrong about that, I think that was the order, so. Oh, now we got six. All right. So, oh, no, <laughs> Josh is just trolling us at this point. <laughs> Get him out of here. Uh, okay, so let's... Um, We'll uh, we'll quickly do uh, we'll do some rapid fire guests. My Discord is completely frozen up, so let's invite. Uh... Oh. Oops! Oh All my right. god! Every... I invited someone. You did okay. Everyone's yeah. playing musical chairs with their hands here. I don't. Yeah. There's probably some kind of lawsuit involved in that. <laughs> Illidan, the homie hasn't been up on stage for a while. Get up here, man, and turn your notifications off too. You have like 500 discords going at the same time. I really miss that Argentinian accent. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, I'm on mute. There we go. No, don't there worry. I've got, I've got my uh, speakers turned off, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I always love chatting with you, and all you hear in the background is. Burp, burp. Yeah, it's because it's, it's cause there's stuff on different computers, so it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's, that's how you um, work NFTs. You got to have at least yeah. three computers uh, yeah. open with different yeah. wallets. Yeah. You you need to. Well, I mean, not just yeah. for that. Just, I mean, you know, looking at uh, Moby and then looking at how right. ETH is doing and then Discord and, like, it's just a fucking pain in the ass. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, yeah, it's been a while since I uh, had a chat with you guys. Um, I, I'm, I missed the first half of the show, so I'm not sure if you guys already talked about this, but did anybody um, have a look at Monaco uh, if you don't have too Tell much? Tell us uh, about this. this yeah, can you – I know I know, in business, I know in business has his hand up uh, probably talking about Monaco too. I actually completely missed this one. Yeah, I mean we can bring in business up now as well. So uh, Sure, let's do it. You just let's wait for him to uh, – can wait to speak. It. There we go. GM, sir. I'm, I'm assuming this was about Monaco. I, I saw you just at the tail end there drop a message about it. Um, the show chat going surprisingly fast this morning, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just had, I had one of my best trading days pretty much ever last night. Last night, I was I just, just went to bed like two hours ago at 7, 8, 7.30 my time. Because <laughs> uh, watching, Monaco, watching Monaco rip, but totally worth it. Can someone throw a link in the chat for me? Um, like an OpenSea link or something? 
So this minted two. This minted like two weeks ago, I think. Um, yeah, it was a, really, it was about two, or a little bit over two weeks, I think. Right. I mean, it, this was a guess. This was like the last time. This launch was the last time I saw Mev Collector pop his turtle head up, um, and it it it, went, it ended up gassing out, um, and then it just kind of kind of faded off and shut down. I think it went down to point oh five uh, floor. Uh, but this is a social network that is trying to be. I think I did, when I was doing the research on it, like there's some venture. It's pretty venture back. They definitely are doing a token called Mona, um, which is going to be related to content creators on the on the platform. Um, God, that's almost a worse token name than Clout. <laughs> I mean, I mean there's, there's there's two tokens, right? You've got the NFT and you've got the the shitcoin, the native shitcoin. Am I on? Hello? Yeah, you're here. I was just uh, I was waiting for. So I like I know nothing about it, so I'm 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 learning here. Yeah, so I mean, I I had a look at this and I thought this might be a good trade. I think I posted it in the chat um, as well a little while ago, but I unfortunately didn't execute it myself. Wow. Um, they minted at like 0.03, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in business. There was like a 0.03 mint. They ran to like 0.08-ish. Um, there's a big VC or a fun guy, Zushu, who tweeted about it and that got it like a, a bunch more attention. Um, and then I guess they've gone live last night and uh yeah it's it's sitting at it's a 0.03 minute and sitting i think about 0.6 right now so uh really gone for a, for a serious run and i think this was another one where um you could maybe kind of see it coming where people were like you know the floor sitting at 0 0.04 0 0.08 whatever it was but then you see a ton of um a ton of big buys happening well above floor for all the uh, all the rare ones and then you're like hang on that's a bit weird what's going on there um but in business, I don't know if you can fill me in over here on what's actually going on with the with the data and stuff on it, because to me it kind of just looks like a like a copy of Twitter, effectively. Um, with we like, all know, you know how that goes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's why I said if people don't have PTSD from BitCloud on my uh, on my post in the chat. But um, it looks to me like you know effectively a, a Twitter clone with um, with verifying an NFT as a PFP and like it gives you a little thing that says your your PFP is an NFT or not. Um, and I don't believe any usernames are reserved or anything, so people are claiming all sorts of fucking shit, as uh, as right. you would expect. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean maybe business can fill us in a bit more on it. Can I just really quickly before you uh, before I let you go? How is this not Deso? How is this not? <laughs> this is this is BitCloud. I'm, I'm just like me twice. I'm Holy looking at this. I'm like I'm making ass. a profile today. I'm like I'm going all in on this. Sorry guys, see you in two months. Um, no, just <laughs> <laughs> really quickly. I just wanted to uh, show the one that Scott dropped in here was uh, so so minted 14 days ago. Um, yeah. Sold on the same day for 0 0.09 ETH. Okay, yeah. and five minutes ago, just sold for four, uh, five ETH, was a yeah. golden yacht. I have no idea what the fuck any of this means, but uh, I'm uh, my interest has been slightly peaked. My In business, hit me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, basically, I want to make sure you understand that basically this is bit, this is bit clout. <laughs> um, the uh, I, the beta. If anybody's interested, we opened up NBO, opened up a channel. I had like 50 invites, uh, so you have to have a yacht to, to make a um, or be invited by somebody with the yacht during the 30-day beta, which started yet like at like 12 o'clock last night um, to make a, an account for the first 30 days. So if you guys go under the project chat, if you're an alpha. If you're an Alpha Mint member, uh, if you go under Monaco, I screenshotted like 30 or 40 invites, or at least like like 20 in there. Um, so you can just go to mono uh, Monaco NFT.io, and if you use one of the invites, just just mention the chat so that people aren't having to guess. Because they didn't make it very easy to like copy paste one at a time. I didn't want to spend all day doing that. So you guys can go check it out. The platform does to me doesn't look all that exciting. I'm interested oh, really? after seeing what ENS did. You know, I, I'm interested in seeing what a venture back token, uh, you know, kind of airdrop is going to look like. Have you? Were you on Bit, Bitcloud in business? No, 
No, I was not on TikTok. So I can tell you what a venture okay. backs token looks like. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Here, here is what really pisses me off. It's that I know social tokens are gonna have a run. I, one yeah, of these years, I know. one of these Talk. months, and I am gonna completely miss it because of PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. <laughs> I know. What's that? I got out of there with a profit. But, I mean, I feel beat up by BitCloud. But to to BitCloud's credit, the right? Of Alpha Mint, right? The seeds of Alpha Mint. Were the se exactly, exactly. exactly. To to BitCloud's credit, though, I think technically, like from a from a tech perspective, I think what they've done is a lot more complicated. And like my first question when I saw this thing, and I was talking about it with um with my with the other group, when they were all fucking uh, circle jerking each other about how much uh, they want on the on buying this shit early, is uh, who owns the fucking data on this? Because can you as far as can I you can explain see... what a circle jerk is for everyone? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, keep going, keep going. Because, it's called because, because... soggy wafer in Australia. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have to bust it's... out a couple more tags for the YouTube show on this. Uh, the right morning show. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but oh, yeah, so as, as as far as I can tell, all the data is just hosted on a fucking server that they own, right? So for them, this is actually going to be extremely valuable data because prior to this, what the fuck could you do? You had people that were buying NFTs. You could see what a wallet is buying. Yeah, sure, great. You can see what they end up selling. You get a little bit of data off that. You have Discord where they connect to via Colab land, but you can't really collate all that data together. But over here now, you can see, okay, this guy's connected his wallet. He owns all of this shit. And you can now fucking harvest all the data on, on what they're talking about, what they're thinking. And um, that to me was like, okay, that's uh, that's that's where they're going to be making the money on this. Whereas with BitCloud, like you, you controlled all of that. You know, everything's completely on chain. It's not just on a server. This just looks, um, yeah. I mean, you just basically it's Facebook, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's Facebook for NFTs. Like they wanna, they wanna harvest all your data. Let's see. So you know, and that's. I think there will be a place for decentralized social media. And to BitCloud's credit, I think their biggest issue was that they were early. I think that's really just, you know, and I mean, it's not that's, Cloud's that's, fault. Maybe it's our fault, right? Yeah, I mean, that's 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 one of the contributing factors being being early. I think there are a couple of the factors yeah. there as well. But we don't need to but, go in yeah, depth with those. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they 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 were early, but there are a lot of people trying to build that because you know anyone can see that that's going to be a, a a big pie in the future. So tons of people are, you know, trying to yeah. do that. I think Bill Clare will eventually to, have it today, hopefully in my lifetime. <laughs> to Free Market's point, actually, sorry, in business is um, like I, I have that feeling too. Like I always flip flop on the idea of whether I want to just like sell my my um, my excess uh, DSO, I guess as it's called now, and just take the profits and just degen them into NFTs or whatever. Um, but I just, I always have that thing in the back of my mind. It's just like the idea is there, they're building a, a actual base for people to build on. And all it takes is yeah. like one project that just develops on there that catches, uh, you know, lightning in a bottle. And I, I always believed that that project wouldn't even really be crypto forward. Um, and next thing you know, yeah. you fucking all that DSO that you've been holding on to goes to the moon. Uh, you know, comparing it to some of the other shit on Coin Gecko or Coin whatever market cap, blah blah blah. I gotta believe that they have more user base than a lot of the shit yeah. coins in the top fifty or top one hundred. Uh, yeah. So there's always that part of me in the back of my mind that if social tokens ever have that run, which it seems inevitable that they will, as Free Market said, that like why the why would I sell low right now? That being said, like my my conviction is it low? <laughs> That's my it's, only question. It's, it's, it's a great it's, it's question. Been low, it's been low since listing. It's been low since listing. Right. Uh, personally, right. I'm a little salty with the name change as well because I bought like fucking ten grand worth of domain names related to Bitcloud. <laughs> 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 my fucking I username was related like to Bitcloud, you dickhead. <laughs> so, uh, I had to change my goddamn name. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh part of the AM show pass is gonna be group counseling as well. <laughs> <laughs> I need it. I need it. 
So, so, so Monaco, I mean, the functionality doesn't seem all that exciting, you know, like it seemed pretty basic on my, for their beta on my first look. Um, but I think we're kind of in that, that ground floor thing. Like you've got your tokens, squirrel your big cloud tokens away and regen. And, you know, is this a play that makes sense to grab those early adopted tokens? Um, for, for a pump and see another ENS or something like that. There's another Can you read that yet, or is that feature coming in a few weeks? I was about to say, also, have they specified how many tokens you're getting and how on, um, yeah, on the... Yeah, it's Bitcoin. in their white paper in their, in their Discord. I, I don't remember exactly what it is, or... Uh, or yeah. Um, but, um, I, you know, I mean, I, that that kind of thing was really what interested me, and, and I, I was trying to figure out so what happened last night, it was like, well, that's weird. People are starting to buy this. And there was a glitch at OpenSea at the time um, where I think it was saying the floor was like 0.09. And I went and looked at activity, and I was like, this is already up to 0.14. And I was like, this thing got destroyed in like 15 minutes. Um, and uh, I just interesting little, little straight trait strategy. I was able to... And this is something I guess we should be paying attention to to do when OpenSea glitches. Man, I, I had a field day with sniping people that were listing at the, the, the OpenSea targeted floor when that when the, the um I think it was as high as like point. Uh, I think it was point three. The, the highest I saw was yeah, I was trading at point three, and OpenSea said point oh nine. Were you were you using a tool or were you doing it manually the sniping? I was using, I was using a tool, uh, a tool that you guys will have, be having on the Alchemist show. Uh, oh, awesome! Yes. A little bit. Yes. Of, yes. In the future. Tomorrow. And, uh, Tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and you know that that gave me a nice little edge on on sniping. You know uh, when you're like, hey, I'm, I need to pick up this quick. Fabulous. And I had. I think I bought, I mean, I was fortunate enough to have 10 Monaco's already, um, and, uh, but I was selling a few of them, and I must have bought probably 10 units last night. Um, as far as, I, I picked up a, a, a Rarity 90 for, for 0.8, sold it for 1.7. Wish I would have held it. I'd, I'd have, it'd probably be worth four or five each right now. Yeah. Um, That's awesome, man. Others as well. So I did very well, not only on just holding that and not dumping it for 0.06, but also uh, on, on the trades. Big win there. Really interesting project. I think that's amazing uh, trading strategies and price action. We have like a few more hands up, and I don't want to. Uh, yeah, we got about 15 minutes left. Them hanging. So. I think their arms are getting tired, but I want to check out Monaco after the show, even though I, I have my PTSD from. Club. Yeah, thanks for coming up, guys. Um, yeah, probably got a, no worry, by the way. Got a, got a voice chat coming soon, too. Yeah. Yep. Alrighty, how do I get off this? Yeah. <laughs> okay, get the cane. The cane. The there cane. Cast GM. Yeah. Good morning, how are you guys? Great. Wonderful. How are you? Yeah, all right, man. Like, um, weekend, getting my fix from you guys as usual. And, yeah, yeah, we're actually. Uh, we need a new record. Did you see what during that conversation? Yeah, yeah, fifty-four, five. fifty-five. Yeah, nice. Yeah, fifty-five. That's a new record. I need a cowbell here and just ring the shit out of it right into the microphone for everyone. That'll get the numbers up too. Um, uh, sorry, tangent here. Cast is up on the stage with us. Sir Cass, take it away. Sir Cass, no, no, take it away. You know, no, it's just I just want to pop in and say hi as usual. Um, and what are your what are you guys looking at this week? So we have a ton of interviews. I'm not sure how many high profile mints are this week. I believe the week after is going to be a lot busier. Um, we got a lot of high profile interviews actually coming up this week. The one I'm most excited for, I think I've talked about it a hundred times. So forgive me if I'm repeating myself. The creator of Little Lemon Friends. If you guys don't know this project, uh, somebody who needs the invite should drop the link in the AM show chat that isn't me because I already have my invites. I don't know if the whitelist is still open. It is invite-based. Do not let that turn you off. He is not, like, creating that type of bullshit hype atmosphere. The vibes in the Discord are amazing. 
He just announced his mint date is December 13th, so that'll be a couple weeks from now. It is the mint I am most looking forward to. I am going to buy a bot for the mint. I am, like, saying that with 100% seriousness. Um, and then we have a couple other great interviews as well with the creators of a bot uh, tomorrow. Uh, the Cyber Baby crew is going to come on and, and walk us through that. And then... Also, our resident uh, one of one superstar ghost is also going to come on uh, later this week and, and chat with us about his Pantone collection, which if you guys haven't checked out, I really think is going to blow up soon. Now, this isn't a small investment. They start at 0.5, um, but it's going to be a great chat. So those are the things I'm looking forward to this week. I don't know how many high pro there are maybe some other people have some color i guess i'm gonna mint kong uh because that seems to be gearing up but i'm only doing it because i'm on to be honest it'll be 0.06 uh cost i'm gonna give it a try yeah we've been we've been doing so much on the uh like organizational stuff for the the content side of it that uh um it's almost like we're just looking like retroactively on the stuff, but yeah, um, Lemon Friends is definitely one to keep uh, keep an eye out, and we'll see. Uh, you know, this might be a week of stealth drops. Um, uh, we'll actually see what kind of um, Clone X ends up doing to the market, as we've alluded to in the past. It uh, if it really kind of takes off, it could be a bit of a liquidity suck for a bit. But uh, yeah, just an update on that: uh, all ten thousand and extra pre-sales have been minted the reason it shows 2200 on OpenSea is because they're stacked so each individual person depending on how many they minted shows up on as one item uh and i'm not even sure how they did the the stacking or whatever but just going and checking out their announcement page right now uh it will be at five p.m eastern standard 2 p.m pacific so i was wrong on the time dutch auction starting at three price goes down 0.1 every 30 minutes that'll be 5 p.m eastern i think we're all gonna hop on voice chat to see uh see the action there yeah it should be fun another random question as i'm looking at the audience i am seeing more and more of these pfps that i'm dying to get hold of and i'm wondering <laughs> And I'm wondering, <laughs> where are these random pictures coming from? <laughs> and I which one? one? <laughs> which ones are you liking? Um, I don't know. They 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 look a bit like your your two, but there's more of them just floating around. Oh, the oh, the wolves! I think oh, some people good. have uh, done the dirty right click save. <laughs> we we yeah, appreciate I, I, all fanfare and support. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's starting to make me feel a little bit jealous, and I don't really want to kind of, <laughs> don't. Right, you know, right click and things. So, um, I'll just have to be patient, I suppose, isn't it? <laughs> there is going to be very, very good news uh, coming up. I guarantee uh, for anybody in this moon lounge. But that's all I'll say. No, that's 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 more. And another thing as well, guys. Um, uh, if you ever need any help. Not just for that, just for anything. Uh, just give me a shout out, man. I'm, I'm, you, you guys are cool, and everyone in this lounge is cool. And I also want to say thank you to, is it In The Business? In, in Business, in business. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Because um, I was, we, we were in a voice chat, and um, I was asking him advice about the Orcs and what I should do with mine, and so, and he was really, really helpful. And um, so I just wanted to kind of say thank you. That awesome. Much appreciated. Cass, thanks so much. It's always a pleasure to have you up here, and I'm uh, I'm sure we will do it again soon. Um, not not to give you the oh, he already just took off. I was gonna say we are just gonna get to the last uh, people. I always hate kicking people off the stage. Like I feel a little bit dirty about it, but uh, I know, right? Fry Rice, what's going on, my friend? How are you guys doing? Can everyone hear me? We, yeah, yes, loud and clear. Great, great. Yeah. So had a good weekend. Um, I kind of missed the first half a little bit. I didn't know if we talked briefly about the littles. Um, I know a bunch of guys minted. Um, it was a little bit of gas war. And then I was in their town hall yesterday. It's just seeing that, you know, like, basically, the Will just said, oh, nothing's going to happen. We're just going to slowly let you know. And then kind of the floor keep on dropping, uh, wondering what people are thinking about that uh so yeah 
Yeah, for Sorry. sure. So I'll just I'll quickly just like do a shameless plug. If you ever miss any of the show, we do record it. It's, uh, it's all on Spotify and YouTube and Apple Music. If you uh, if if you know you ever listen to podcasts or whatever, people have kind of taken a liking to that. Um, we did touch on the littles uh, a tiny bit, um, not too in depth, simply just because it was a successful drop. Uh, it went off like mostly without a hitch, and um, you know, free market and I have pretty strong feelings about the importance of a whitelist and and how long um in the future these or not whitelist sorry um roadmap and uh how long in the future these these people should be planning out um and we typically stay on the side of like don't over promise um because the second that you don't deliver on all of these ridiculous promises that you make um it's just fud 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 uh so yeah maybe in in the short term that doesn't feel good for the floor price but i think for the longevity of the project uh, he seems to be doing the right things and that is not getting too ridiculous with promises uh free market i cut you off no it's it's holding a pretty good floor i think that the only the only problem is that people were exp- he was alluding to all these things happening behind the scenes that he didn't want to hint at and i think that builds people up to think that once the reveal happened and once the floor started to pull back maybe he was going to you know drop this bomb to try to take us into the stratosphere now every owner looks at things differently maybe he's even looking at like let's see how low the floor can get before i drop this news allow people to get in i'll let you know i want to see where this market is maybe he really does have an ace in his back pocket but in general you can't you know if you are buying something that you expect to go up right away you kind of have to sell into whatever the volume is you know they minted at 0.125 they got up to 0.7 and that was the early trade if you held it beyond that you believe in either the long-term prospects of the art or the project and if that's the case you got to give these guys a chance to work i mean if this were any other area whether it was tv or movies music you know how long it takes to put out product it really it's uh, fans want things right away and investors want things even sooner than that and there's just such a spotlight on these nft projects because we're all in the discord with the creators and the mods and we can have their ear anytime we want and it's a it's a very visible kind of uh meta in that sense so i think the bad bunnies creator when he came on went over it well in his interview he put out a long thread about when 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 and you guys should go check out that interview. It's up on YouTube now if you if you haven't listened to it. But in general, you gotta give the creators a chance. And it's been less than twenty four less than forty eight hours since their reveal. Um, and I do think the littles have good things coming down the road. So this this price now may be an opportunity, not uh, something to be grumpy about. Yeah, our sh- our short term thinking uh, tends to just take over from time to time. I mean. You know, thinking back to what was it, April, May, when Bored Apes dropped. I mean, like for for a little bit of context, we're talking about seven months, and uh, and and this project has gone from a slow minting process to, uh, you know, floors of twenty, thirty, forty ETH um, in that time frame, and that's just seven months. Uh, so you know, that's that's extraordinarily fast. But you know, it March feels like forever to me ago so i mean the, the space moves so fast there's so much happening and you just expect these incredible returns um quickly and i'm not just saying you i mean like it, it, it's a mindset that even i try to um to to quell qu- quite frequently um but yeah i mean just give these guys some time you know and the, the other thing too is that i i find funny um this town hall is happening and he's he's saying you know we're, we're gonna just keep working and, and get this you know this project done right um, and then people don't respond well to that. And the floor starts dropping. I'm looking in the littles discord right now. And he threw it out to the community about what the royalty should be on this project. Now, take it a little bit with a grain of salt, because the, the actual mint price of this was incredibly expensive, but he threw out four options. It was two and a half, three, three and a half, four percent, right? The overwhelming response to this was two and a half percent. Oh, really? <laughs> right. So, but but here's my point, right? Like, this is how we always want to have it 
every way possible, right? Like if you want the longevity of the project to be successful and you want this to be a well-funded team that can, you know, focus on building partnerships and hiring the right people and, and, and living without having to take a second job to pay the bills or whatever, like vote on three and a half percent, vote on 3%, you know, like it, it just, to me, it just seems, it just seems funny that like we, we get so wrapped up with the fact that like, and I'm air quoting right now, we're investors and we expect a return on investment. I mean, at the end of the day, you're buying JPEGs um, in a highly speculative market. And if you want the long-term success of something to, to, to be great, uh, you know, hit them with some support. And, yeah. you know, every like, why would you hold a town hall anyway, if you didn't have anything ready to go? Let people dream and imagine that'll support the floor price better than you coming on and saying we have nothing to say. Hi. Yeah. Throw a party with uh, with a that? DJ or something. I mean, right. Yeah. I, that's a very popular thing to have do fun. nowadays. We yeah. may know some DJs. Might. Yeah. Might know some. Uh, Fry Rice, thank you so much. We're going to cap it off with um, with Josh today. Um, but if you need anything else from us, obviously we'll be around. And I think we're going to try and jump into the voice chat for a little bit while I while I put together the show after. Yeah. Um, so if you want to jump down there. Yeah, because I, I just wanted to briefly mention the littles, um, you know, because I, I thought maybe you talked about it. So I'll, I'll just listen to the podcast. But what I was actually trying to point out is the wizard and dungeon whether it wizard and dragon is minting out today for yes. um, um, pre-mint. I, I have that white list, so I'll keep an eye. But what was interesting is they offered to have anyone try to hack their contract for 50K. Oh, I saw this. <laughs> nice. And like yeah, three people did it, right? Right. And that's a sharp contrast from all the bear game, shit game, you know, even the wolf game. So I thought, uh, if that is going well and, you know, you can see some volume and maybe there's still some left for public men for the boys that are not in it, uh, could keep an eye out on it. Could be interesting. The supply is a little bit more than usual. It's 15,000 for 0 0.088. Um, but it seems like they just have like a weird vibe where everyone just chants guard the tower. Uh, that's, yeah, that project. I have good feelings about it. Uh, I think I think it was in in the works before Wolf Game. You know, we're looking at all these cheap Wolf Game derivatives. This feels like it was in the works before that I mentioned earlier in the show. So exactly. actually, this is a really cool idea, and I'm glad you brought it up um, and and got it in before I kicked you off the stage. Sorry, <laughs> um, but uh, no, I mean, look, you said point uh, zero eight eight for the mint price, uh, fifteen thousand for um, the mint quantity. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. And there's seven five hundred wide listed already, like the guards that were just chanting, right. so they got in. So and each of them, I think, could everyone get could mint one. You're only allowed to mint one? I think two. I think two. So that's the whole supply. I guess. Well, I guess anyone that, if someone misses it, they'll put it to the public or whatever. So there'll be like 100 available for the public. <laughs> but just just to like quickly recap the, the idea behind what they did with the contract thing, which I actually think is kind of cool. Uh, you know, they, they stand to bring in about five and a half million dollars in ETH in the, uh, in the next, um, you know, potentially 24 hours. Why not throw fifty thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars out there to anybody that can pick holes in your contract, and you can, you know, shore <clears throat> shore it up before the game drops, and then you have this angry horde of people on there because the you know some of the game mechanics are fucking broken. I mean, I love this. Like you see, large corporations do it all the time. Google, Amazon, Apple—they all have bounty programs for white hat hackers to try and break into their systems and they'll pay them bounties of a hundred million dollars uh, excuse me a hundred thousand to a million dollars for that and i love that projects are doing i mean how much shit coding and copy paste bullshit has cost people millions of dollars in the last few months so i i love this initiative i think man if you're not getting your contracts audited big shout out to dots over at kaiju who this is a little inside info for everybody, but if you own a Kaiju King and you're in their lizard lab or their alpha rooms, he will audit your contract, your project's contract to make sure there's no bullshit in it. And I mean, Dots is a superstar. Like this is huge um, that he would do this. So big shout out to Dots and the Kaiju Kings, which is just the community 
I continue to love, even though they've been a little quiet and the floor has suffered. Uh, if anything, I'd be buying more. I'm not. I'm not selling my kaiju. Yeah. Well, actually. Thank you. Yeah. We, we have a good community here too. I'm very bullish. Uh, by the way, I'm bullish on Viso. I hope to get some of my money back. <laughs> 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 thanks man appreciate cool, man. it thanks for coming up bro uh all right Good we'll morning. we'll cap it off with the shroom head himself josh what's that? oh ah, and what a what a line we'll cap it off i uh, thank with you shroom head? you saw what this i did there gold gold and he bailed <laughs> and he bailed uh, oh there he is I, no. anyway oh there he is yeah invite 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 get to go He fell off hey the stage. Guys. Yeah, classic. One Good of those morning. close the window as you're trying to uh, accept the invite moments here. Ah, <laughs> oh, good morning, guys. Everybody, everybody doing well post Turkey Day, recovering. Uh, no turkey here great. for me, but uh, you know, I did some some Black Friday shopping. Um, but uh, but other than that, yeah, no, I'm good. What was the big purchase? Um, we uh just bought a new TV. Nothing crazy. There we go. That's the hot ticket this year. Hundred dollar TVs at uh, large smart TVs. Just as a at Amazon yeah, Amazon. crazy conversation that nobody gives a shit about in here. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like looking at like eighty five inch TVs. These things are fucking monstrous, and it was just like seven hundred, eight hundred bucks. I'm like, what a what a uh, time to well, be alive. Oh my well, god. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyways, Sorry, enough Josh. about TVs. Oh, okay. <laughs> let's let's talk narcotics with Josh. Yeah, let's <laughs> talking narcotics with Josh. Um, so now I I just I had a question, and maybe this is an episode we could do sometime that focuses on this. But I've been looking a little bit more into growth and marketing for these projects, um, and it seems like publicly all you ever see are people saying, "Oh, it's all organic," or you see the you know really blatant shilling and spam that you get on discord and twitter and other places but i feel like there's a lot more going on behind the scenes that leads to successful growth and marketing in this space that is kind of hard to wrap like for me at least has been hard to wrap my head around and i don't see a lot of people writing about it anywhere i don't see a lot of documentation on it but i wanted to get your guys take on like what are the channels people are using what is working out there? Why are some of these projects taking off so well? Because I don't think it's just virality. I think there is most likely a marketing element behind it. So yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there to you guys and hear what you have to say. This is free markets domain in a nutshell. <laughs> so there's a few, I think there's a few factors here. First of all, the ability to see the world as it is. In other words, we know trends are popping up and dying in nfts constantly right so you could have any project you want and maybe let's use wizards and dragons as a great example maybe it was wizards and dragons up until two weeks ago when they changed it to wizards and dragons game right so there's little understanding the current meta and how to adapt your project without changing it so to say is i think a big thing the other thing is a lot like the traditional art market, it's about who you know, right? There are people with reach, there are people with connections, and there are kingmakers. Vincent Van Doe is a great example. He goes and buys a ghost one of one Pantone and tweets about it, and now ghost Pantones are, are moving regularly, right? So it's it's very similar to how the traditional art world works so you know it's one of those things you hate to hear if you're new and you don't know anybody but you know your network and who you know is pretty important the there are two places that the nft world exists and that's nf that's twitter and that's discord so being proficient in both those social medias is a huge thing and i see 90% of the accounts in the NFT world were created within the last four months, right? This is a new era, <clears throat> a new area that people are coming into and they either create new accounts or change their old account to, to fit into this new world. And that's, they're, they're, they don't understand necessarily how to work the engagement on Twitter yet. And how to shill your project without shilling it is an art. 
right? Like you need to know how to go in, have genuine conversation in certain communities, whether that's on Twitter or on Discord to the point where people go, hey, great PFP, what's that? I mean, that's that's a huge part of it. And it's it's just, it takes time. And you just have to, it's just like going into a cocktail party, right? You got to work the different different people there. If you're a hedge fund guy, you go around selling people on whatever product you have. And it's kind of the same thing. You got to sell without selling, you know? I love it. That was a great answer. Yeah. Okay. I, um, I do also wonder, like, a lot of these relationships we see between projects and the quote unquote kingmakers out there. I do wonder how many of those are truly organic, like the art was discovered, and how many of those are sort of behind the scenes dealing a little bit as well. Um, I, it's kind of hard to gauge when you're watching it from the outside, but from what I've seen, it does. Some of it seems sort of. Uh, it does seem like there's a there's an art art for shout out sort of exchange of some kind that's that goes on out there. I, I think Cobain and I kind of highlighted it the other week or the other on day, Friday, actually. Yeah, Friday. yeah, with Tropo Farmer, right? You know, when you're conceiving a project, you're you're DMing influencers and the heads of projects behind the scenes. And you know what? These <clears throat> these guys will listen to you. They may say no, or they may <clears throat> they may come up with a price that you don't like but they'll listen to you and that's definitely a strategy of a lot of people i think this highlights the difference between organic and hydroponics i mean organic and manufactured <laughs> life, right the idea is that you can create these very large flash in the pans through straight engagement engineering or you can try to go the completely organic route, or you can do a mix of both. I don't think there's any right answers. It's all about how you your project and whether you want it to be this long-term thing you create a company and devote your life to, or whether this is just a one-off and it's it's you're doing it for that project's sake and you move on after. Organic growth typically tends to create a more rabid but smaller fan base. Um, it can take a long time, if ever, to really hit like a gigantic crit critical mass of virality. But uh, um, especially with organic growth, it's like it, it's based on, you know, people's referral of your community to their friends. And I mean, at the end of the day, people only want to share things with their friends. That's going to make them look good, too. Um or you can manufacture it and do invite uh, invite spam and, and stuff like that. And as Free Market said, that's it's it's got its own legitimacy. Um, but you'll see like a, a much lower rate of engagement. So if the reach all of a sudden hits a million people based on all of these, you know, the that uh, exponential growth of people sending out invites to anyone and everyone they can think of, uh, you know, it might reach a million people, but you might only grab twenty thousand of them. Um, and maybe of that 20,000, you know, uh, there's a small handful of them that are like true, true fans. Uh, organic, you'll get a lot more true fans, but you'll have a smaller community and probably not quite the reach that uh, that some of the projects have. Absolutely. Yeah, super well, interesting well. stuff. Okay. I, yeah, I think. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think one of these days, I think it would be cool maybe to have an episode about growing projects or from folks here who are working on projects. I know we have quite a few of them. We'll write it on the list the right here. now. <clears throat> All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. A little breaking news for everyone. Uh, Twitter stocks have been halted uh, for trading on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, there is some news coming. Oh my God, this was the biggest cliffhanger ever. He said, there is some news caught and then just dropped right off. Are you still here? Oh my God, this is like performance art at its finest, I swear. <laughs> Are so me right now? Where's the rest of this news? Yeah, he's like, you'll never hear this news again and then just goes <laughs> offline. <laughs> yeah, no. no, this I think this is pretty big. It's probably either related to Jack Dorsey as CEO or uh Twitter or uh crypto. I actually have a feeling there's something going on here. So everyone should watch the wires. I'm watching Bloomberg right now to see if anything crosses on uh on oh. Twitter, but that stock's been halted for a few minutes now. Interesting. All right. Well, we will uh we will follow up with that tomorrow, I'm sure. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull some stuff up there and keep an eye on it uh, while I am kind of 
running all of the the show notes and everything i'll jump into the voice chat and hang out with anybody that wants to join me as well um yeah all time high for listeners today we hit what was it 54 55 somewhere in there 55 55 55. boom yes sir so that's great um as i mentioned a couple of times uh for the shameless self-promotion uh youtube spotify and uh twitter podcast that's all up on there and we appreciate when anybody uh uh, shows up to the or, or or joins that and subscribes to that. So uh, I also see Acclezy has got his hand up. Um, we're not going to get to you today, unfortunately, but uh, if you're in here tomorrow, we will uh, make sure to put you on the first priority to get up on stage. Uh, great show, great to be back. Happy, um, uh, actually, for like almost the first time in my life, happy that the weekend's over to to get back up on stage with you and do these shows. I uh, love doing it, and uh, I can't wait to, to tomorrow. I'm sure we'll have tons to talk about. Yes, sir. Right back at you. Good luck at the tables, everybody. We will see you tomorrow. All right. Peace.